what's going on guys so last week I saw the Batman and I'm really glad that I held off on making this video for a little bit because I've actually had time to sit with the movie and think about it for a while and it's of no surprise to me the amount of love that it's been receiving over these past couple of days uh, and it's also kind of a massive shame that it was the first big comic book movie to hit theaters because I really don't think anything else is going to measure up to it in terms of quality. Uh, that said, is this the best Batman movie ever made? Well, that's a wholly subjective sentiment. For some people, this will definitely be the Batman movie that they've been waiting their entire lives to see. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm among that crowd, and part of the reason for that is simply the story that Matt Reeves is telling is one that I am just inherently no longer enthusiastic about. I've kind of had my fill of, it's Batman, but he's young and inexperienced, and it's Batman, but darker and more realistic than before. And really, that's a problem that I've had with DC over the past couple of years through comics, video games, TV shows, and even other movies, despite the quality of content, it's still more of the same. And I'll talk about that a little later in the video, but yeah, I definitely do feel like that is an unfair complaint to throw at Matt Reeves and his movie, but I can't deny that I went into the film with that bias. Be that as it may, once I was in the theater and engaging with the film for myself, I had what I think is probably one of the greatest movie-going experiences that I've had, not just with a comic book movie, but any film that I've seen in theaters for quite a while. Matt Reeves, on top of being a very obvious Francis Ford Coppola fan, as well as a massive Martin Scorsese fan, is very clearly a Batman fan. Because all of the inspiration that he's pulling from is on the screen. From Earth One, to The Long Halloween, to even sources outside of comics, be it the animated series or Arkham Origins, and even pulling from other live-action Batman interpretations, it's all here. Hell, this movie even feels like a clapback to all of the vapid Twitter hot takes about how Bruce Wayne is just a billionaire who beats up poor people. Can you shut the fuck up? And what we wind up with in the end is probably the most expensive fan film ever made. And I mean that in the best way possible. Again, it's not what I'm looking for personally out of a live action Batman movie right now. Uh, part of me is still very married to that Zack Snyder take on the character where it was a very established Batman that lived in a very heightened very epic, comic booky superhero society. Personally, that's just more what I'm interested in seeing at this point. But again, I'm still very impressed with what Matt Reeves was able to accomplish here. Uh, the best way that I can describe this movie is, imagine Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's Zero Year, filtered through the lens of Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One, but drawn by Liebermayho. This movie finds a weird way to take high concept comic booky ideas and ground them in some sense of reality while also finding a way to allow those ideas to maintain a sense of twisted weight and majesty, including Batman himself, which I'm not only relieved by, but again, very impressed with. Uh, with Bruce Wayne's first scene, we're treated to a wide shot of Gotham City, and it's oppressive, it's raining, the city is bathed in neon, it looks like a fucking Adam Kubert splash page from Batman R.I.P., or a panel from David Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One, and Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne delivers this extremely pulpy, distinctly Frank Miller-inspired monologue about the city, and how corrupt it is, and how he's not even sure if being Batman is making that much of a difference, but also saying 
possibly my favorite line in the movie, which is, The criminals of Gotham are now afraid of the dark, because everyone now looks to the shadows, wondering if Batman's lurking in them, waiting to strike. But they're wrong. I'm not in the shadows. I am the shadows. And first of all, holy shit, my nigga, that is raw. That is just pure, unadulterated badassery right there. Uh, but secondly, this scene is followed up with some gang, and they're trying to initiate this kid by having him sucker punch some poor guy at a train station, and the kid starts to get cold feet, and in that hesitation, everyone looks up to the sky, and they see the bat signal, and then they look to the shadows which Batman emerges from like a demon in the night. And this is where Matt Reeves' horror background really comes into play. Because whenever he shoots Batman, despite the fact that he's a guy wearing body armor, which I'll, I'll talk about because I, I have opinions, he never feels like a guy who's just wearing body armor. He feels... Shit, dude, he feels like the goddamn Batman. You know... There's this haunting weight to every step Batman takes. Especially when he's shot in a lot of those entrance scenes. Uh, he feels like a monster in a horror movie. And a large part of that is in the way in which Robert Pattinson plays the character. And I think, especially when he's in the suit, he strikes a very interesting balance. Because he feels vulnerable and human to the audience, but at that same time, I can also be led to believe that he feels like an inhuman, unstoppable force of nature to the criminals of Gotham. And speaking of Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne, I've heard a lot of people, you know, even people who really like this movie and hail it as the second coming from the Bukkake of Christ, that their main complaint with the film is that Bruce Wayne is too much of a recluse. And, I mean, I get it. You know, I can certainly see where that complaint comes from. But echoing the sentiments that I said earlier, this movie is very much inspired by Zero Year, Earth One, and Arkham Origins. In fact, I'll go as far to say that this movie is a post-Zero Year, post-Earth One, post-Arkham Origins movie, which is both a good and a bad thing, and I'll talk about that a little later in the video, but I don't see how you wind up with this film as it is without those influences. Because in those stories, Bruce Wayne is depicted as being very isolated and very secluded. He wants nothing to do with the people of Gotham socially, and he wants nothing to do with the public. For him, the mission is the only thing that matters, and I think that's fine within the context of the movie, as long as in further installments, much like the comics and video games that this movie's pulling from, Bruce Wayne progresses as a character and realizes that having that kind of attitude is counterintuitive to the mission. Because regardless of whether he wants to or not, if his ultimate goal is to clean out the city, you can't be a hero to the people if you aren't among them, at least to a certain degree. And throughout this movie, we see Bruce, at least as Batman, uh, go through a character arc where he goes from being the vengeful, angry creature of the night who beats the shit out of criminals, even terrifying the people that he's trying to protect, to this genuine hero who the people of Gotham come to see as their ever-vigilant Dark Knight. And even Bruce, in his pulpy-ass monologues, which I really adored, by the way, um, because it feels like I was reading a Batman graphic novel on screen, uh, but even Bruce talks about how maybe the mission has changed, and maybe Batman has to represent something other than just... I'm vengeance. And I also really appreciate how this movie doesn't fall into the Batman trap that we often see with other Batman material, be it comics, animation, or otherwise. Because one of the big problems that I have sometimes with Batman stories is that Batman himself is approached as this stoic charisma vacuum, while the other characters around him come off as being more interesting and likable 
than Batman, who, in his stoicism, feels like a non-entity in the stories that are supposedly built around him. This is a big problem that I have with the animated series. It's a major problem that I've had with the Arkham games, especially after playing those recently. And it's a problem with a lot of the comics that we've had over the past 30 plus years. Which, thankfully, is a problem that this movie avoids by confronting Bruce's stoicism and critiquing it as seclusion and obsession. For me, the only thing that was lacking for Rob's Bruce Wayne interpretation was any conversation regarding his refusal to kill. It's something that's here that's brought up pretty arbitrarily, but there's no conversation about why, and ultimately it feels like it's just one of those things that's here because we're adapting comics, and in the comics, Batman doesn't kill. And also there's people getting really anal on the internet about Batman killing, so we're just not going to do that here. But with this film being so heavily inspired by the long Halloween, often with bits of dialogue and scenes from the comic either straight up being adapted or referenced to happening verbatim, it would have been nice to see Bruce Wayne open up in his journals about how his father, being a doctor, plays a huge influence on his life, and that vow that Thomas made to honor life as the most sacred thing above all else is something that Bruce also wants to honor, because in his own way, he wants to follow in his father's footsteps. Which, I've been pretty open about this. Uh, as the years go by, I do see the long Halloween in sort of a less than favorable light, if we're gonna be nice about it. Um, but I still like the idea behind Bruce being Batman as his own way of trying to chase his father's ghost. Uh, I think that's a very fascinating idea, and I think that it definitely could have worked in this film, given how much of it centers around Thomas Wayne and Bruce suffering the sins of his father. Which, okay, let's talk about that. So, the Riddler is the primary antagonist of this film, and the Riddler's entire scheme is to uncover this organized criminal conspiracy within the heart of Gotham City. Which is honestly quite refreshing, having a Batman story outside of the comics that hinges on a mystery. It really plays up Batman's detective skills, which we honestly haven't seen a lot of in more popular media these past couple of years. Uh, so, as per the usual Batman depiction, Gotham is just a filthy slut of a city, endlessly getting rammed in the ass by real mafioso types, uh, but quite famously, there was a massive drug bust that crippled the Moroni crime family operation, and Salvatore Moroni went to prison. But the problem didn't stop there. Carmine Falcone, which, by the way, I can't verbally communicate in any human language the pure joy that I felt in the theater hearing somebody finally pronounce the Roman's name properly, now that shit was just pure euphoria on my ears. Uh, but Carmine Falcone took over the Moroni drug trade while the Penguin oversaw Carmine's operations. And then once Thomas and Martha Wayne died, the Gotham Renewal Fund, which was the primary Wayne Foundation charity that Thomas set up, was cannibalized by the mob and turned into a money laundering outfit. Which really contributed to Gotham's infrastructural issues, which is how we end up with Gotham City being such a shithole. And something that I don't want to say worried about, but something that I thought they were going to do with this movie was Crooked Thomas Wayne. Because that's a concept that a lot of comic book creators and even storytellers in other mediums, uh, namely gaming with the Batman Telltale series, have been playing with. This idea that Thomas Wayne maybe wasn't the squeaky clean Boy Scout billionaire philanthropist that Bruce likes to idealize him as. Which, personally, I'm not a big fan of. I definitely see the appeal of it, you know, having Batman's crusade against Gotham wind up being a crusade against the legacy of his father and all of that, but personal taste here, I much prefer the Waynes being good people trying to set the example in a world that's maybe beyond hope. It's a nature-nurture thing, which I have opinions on and I'll talk about that in a second, but the route that Matt Reeves chooses to go with Thomas is less Telltale and more Long Halloween. It's a situation where 
you don't get to be wealthy in a city like Gotham and not grease palms and break bread with the criminal underworld. And with Thomas being the man that he was, you know, he liked to see the good in people. Even mobsters like Carmine Falcone. And it's his optimism that winds up costing him his life. And I love that idea because Bruce, as depicted in the film, is a cynic. But, and for the life of me, I can't remember who said this. But there's this quote that says, Cynical people are just frustrated optimists. And Bruce is a frustrated optimist. It's why he's Batman. He wants the city to get better, but he's been living a life of disappointments for so long, he's not even sure if what he's doing is working. And I love that idea, because it immediately draws a parallel between him and his father. And it makes me wonder, if Thomas and Martha weren't gunned down in Crime Alley, would Bruce be more like his father? Because they also bring up Bruce's mother, who, in this film, is in Arkham. Which I think is an idea that comes from Jeff Johns and Gary Frank's Earth One. And that's also an idea that I find very fascinating. Uh, because again, going back to that nature-nurture idea, while it's comfortable to think that Bruce Wayne would likely turn out to be a happy young man just like his father if tragedy never struck his life, with his mother being in Arkham and suffering a history of mental illness, you do start to question whether or not if Bruce, as we see him, would really be all that different from Bruce if his parents were still alive. And if, instead of being Batman, he would engage in some other suicidal and reckless pursuit as an emotional outlet. Regardless, with this being Bruce's family history, specifically in regards to Martha's history of mental illness and her family's extensive history of mental illness and tragedy, things got a little dicey when Thomas began his campaign for mayor. Because he starts getting blackmailed by this reporter who works for Salvatore Moroni, so Thomas, not wanting his wife and son to suffer public humiliation and the trauma that would result from it, asks Carmine to handle the situation. Which he does! By killing the guy! and then using that as leverage over Thomas, which, Thomas being Thomas, threatens to go to the police, which is how and why the Waynes are murdered, and it's not a random act of violence. It's a mob hit. And I know some people aren't gonna be a fan of that idea because they much prefer the senseless nature of Batman's origin, but I actually quite like the idea that Bruce Wayne's parents were whacked. You know, it's a very Silver Age concept, because I think in the 50s, uh, there was the story where Thomas Wayne beats up the wrong guy at a Halloween party, and the mob goes after him. Granted, this movie doesn't do the whole, technically, my father was the first Batman. You know, it doesn't go that direction, thankfully. But it does bring back that idea that Thomas wasn't the kind of guy to play ball with the more sketchy types and he does wind up paying for it with his life. Uh, but the problem is, the nuance of that situation isn't taken into account from people who are looking at things from the outside looking in. And the Riddler is one of those guys. And I guess I'll talk about the Riddler a little bit, although I don't feel one way or the other about him. Paul Dano delivers an amazing performance, and I really like the 4chan domestic terrorist angle that the film's going for, but he's just not in the movie enough for me to care about him. And I know that the immediate rebuttal to that statement would be, well, John Doe's barely in Seven, but he's a major character of the film. Okay, yeah, you're right, but the Riddler's not John Doe. The Riddler is the Riddler and I wished we got to see more of him. But I do like his plan, and I love how he has this weird hero worship for Batman, while also seeing their game of cat and mouse as a team effort to take down the mob. It really plays up that Batman inspires his own worst enemies kind of idea from the comics. Also, speaking of which, from a fanboy perspective, I love that Matt Reeves more or less just straight up adapted Zero Year, well, okay, not, 
straight up adapted. It's about as much Zero Year as The Dark Knight is The Long Halloween, but it takes the iconography surrounding Zero Year and he does his version of it. Because, I mean, there's no way that you can adapt Zero Year beat for beat on film. That comic is long as shit. Granted, the movie is also long as shit. I even had points throughout the runtime where I started looking at my phone because this movie takes its time. Uh, <laughs> and that is one of the film's greatest strengths as well as it's one of the film's greatest weaknesses. This is a slow burn. And on the one hand, I appreciate that because it really plays up that neo-noir tone that Matt Reeves was going for but I do feel like there are some characters who, despite the movie's runtime, still wind up being shafted. Riddler is one, but also Catwoman? I really want to like Zoe Kravitz's Selina Kyle. She's damn near off the page from Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One. I just didn't feel like I lived with her for a long enough period of time. I also didn't buy her attraction to Batman whatsoever, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be in the minority here, but the subtle flirtation was one thing, but when they're kissing and there are scenes where I'm supposed to feel like they're star-crossed lovers like in Tom King's Batman or Hush or even The Dark Knight Rises, I don't know man, I'm just not buying it. And part of me feels like their relationship needed a bit more time to breathe. But I can say the same thing for the entire movie, and I don't know what can be cut from this film to make it any shorter without compromising the overall narrative, but it's very long, and it's trying its best to flesh out all of its characters, and the more I talk about it, the more I start to feel like this movie maybe could have been split into like a 5 or 6 episode miniseries on HBO Max. And speaking of that idea of the film trying to flesh out its characters, I also got the vibe that the film was trading off of the audience's perception of Batman from pop culture. Like, okay, why is Batman so anal about using guns and killing people? Because comics. Why are Batman and Catwoman attracted to one another? Because comics. And for a character like Batman who has been overexposed in pop culture, Part of me does want to say the film gets a pass for stuff like that, but at the same time, going back to a point that I made earlier in the video, I see the inspiration behind this movie, and as a Batman fan myself, I couldn't appreciate the obvious reverence for the character anymore. But at that same time, I also feel like I've seen this movie a thousand times over. And again, I love this movie, I had an amazing time watching it in the theaters, and I can't wait to see it in the theaters again, but these are things that just kind of started popping off in my head as I started to think about it a little more. Uh, outside of that, the only other problems that I have with the movie are like really minor nitpicky stuff. Uh, for example, I love the visual style that this movie has. Aside from the first Tim Burton Batman movie and the Todd Phillips Joker movie, this is the only other Batman film where Gotham City feels like Gotham City, and I appreciate that. However, with the overall aesthetic of this film being damn near flawless, it really highlights how bad the Batsuit looks in this. I still think the costume is an eyesore. I'm sorry, I know there are people who really love it, but for me, it's just too busy, and in places it's a little too baggy. It feels like somebody took the worst qualities of the Arkham Origins suit and the worst qualities of Libra Mayho's interpretation of the Batman costume, and fused them together and made an abominable failed abortion of a superhero costume. Now granted, much like the Batsuit from The Dark Knight, which I also have a weird and often conflicting feeling on, within the context of the movie, I think the suit works very well. The suit is puffy and it looks like it's held together with straps and buckles, because it is. Because the suit itself expands into a massive wingsuit, which also means that the reason for the cape being as baggy and round as it is, is because it's a parachute. And those weird tubes on Batman's gauntlets, 
Well, those are CO2 pipes, because the grapnel gun is attached to his gauntlets, and they pop out like one of those concealed low-caliber sleeve pistols. And the chest emblem, which I think looks terrible, uh, is actually shaped that way because it's a massive tactical knife which is used in substitute of batarangs, which Batman doesn't use at all in this movie. So that's weird. Uh, but again, within the context of the narrative, the suit works perfectly fine. It's just, aesthetically, I'm just not a fan. But since I don't want to end this video off on a negative note, I'll finish this off by saying that I am absolutely in love with the score by Michael Giacchino. Uh, quite possibly my favorite Batman theme, just narrowly beating out the Christopher Drake score from Arkham Origins, which is still a favorite of mine. Uh, but the score for this film is bombastic, it's oppressive, but also mellow and sweet in some places. The Catwoman theme gave me very heavy Femme Fatale vibes, and there's also this sort of western lone gunman kind of tune that highlights Batman's mythic, legendary outlaw sort of status that we definitely reach by the end of this film. And I thought that it was uh, not only perfectly in tune with this movie, but also fitting for the character of Batman just in general. Uh, but yeah, in the end, I really enjoyed The Batman, uh, definitely one of my favorite comic book movies, uh, runner-up for sure as my second favorite Batman movie, and I'm really excited to see where this whole Matt Reeves Batverse goes. Uh, but what about you? What are your thoughts on this film? Uh, what are your thoughts regarding my thoughts on this film? Uh, and I'm very curious, what do you think about the Batsuit? Uh, I'm sure I'm going to be in the minority there of people who just don't like it, but I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, so again, let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button, share support the channel, and if you want to see more content like this, all you gotta do is subscribe. I am the Mystical Green Beanie, thank you for watching, and as always, until next time, adios nachos, adios.